Anything else, anybody? Yeah, Charlie? I think this is a national problem. Uh, me and I have been on both sides. At one time I used to be a realtor, now I'm not, and I see it from both sides. And we've had problems in Oregon where the homeowners who sell the properties have different methods of creating problems for the residents who are trying to sell that property. I happen to know that realtors throughout the country are held by certain laws that these park owners are not. And they actually create all kinds of problems. And we've had our state legislators go in there and try and resolve some of these, mm -hmm. but it's not enough. Mm -hmm. I personally feel that a representative that I've seen selling in a lot of these parks, selling those homes, is not qualified to sell those homes. And a realtor, if he or she tried to do some of the things these park owners are getting away with, would lose their job and possibly go to jail. Right. Because of the obligations they're required to abide by. Yeah. So your new law requires them to be licensed. The, doesn't it's it not the same the as a realtor's license. I'm sorry, and it doesn't stop them from doing what they're doing. It's they they don't. The new law doesn't require it to be a realtor's license. No. Uh -huh. Gary, well, I was going to say New Jersey. It does require them to have a, a realtor's license. Uh -huh. Florida, it doesn't. No, that was Gary. So Deanna, and then. Uh, Arizona has a mobile home sales certification. And that's not the same. No, no. Yes, no it's, it's not, not the same. No, it's not. Right. And I, I have a question because I don't know the legality of this. To me, logically, it seems like it should be illegal, but logic doesn't always count. <laughs> um, we have a realtor in our development that actually lives there, okay? And what she does, and this is no exaggeration at all, she drives around all day. Um, non-stop, all day, from nine to dark. She'll drive around, and if she thinks you look like, I don't know, you might be moving, or you have garbage out, or she will literally knock on your door, and she knows everybody's everything. If you're coming, you're going, you're gonna move in five minutes, she knows it all. She has a listing for almost every single home in our development, and there are people, including myself, who believe that she is somehow uh, involved on another level with ELS and that there's some kind of payback going on there. Um, is, is that a legal thing for a realtor to, to do? I mean, I don't know how that works. Well, I, I mean, I think every homeowner that she approaches has the ability to say no thanks. I mean, right? You, yeah. You, you've got to you've got to stand up for yourself and go. Well, no, I'd rather go to this realtor. So if if she's intimidating people and threatening them and she's making them feel that they she ha they have to go with her, then I, I would say that there is a legal um, malpractice there. But it, but if she's just going and knocking on your door, and going, hey, how I am Joe from down the street? Looks like you might be moving. I can help you sell your home. And you say, oh, that sounds great. Thank you. Then that's your choice. Right. Yeah. Yeah, oh, um, Deanna, and then over here to Betty. Yeah. The interesting part is you talk about ELS. In our ELS park, they would not allow someone to do that because they would consider that operating a business on the ELS. And they actually put our Avon lady out of business because she was operating a business out of her home. Okay? She's not allowed to leave her books or, or samples or anything in the clubhouse anymore. So that right there would not be allowed in our ELS park because she'd be operating the business out of her home. We have some entertainers in our park and uh, the park will not allow the activity board to employ them to entertain at any of our activities because that would be running a business out of your home. Wow. So I mean they're very strict about that so I find that interesting that they allow that in your park. So. One of the other on the the park owners have the right to approve anyone that wants to move into that park. So if they are working with PLF, then it doesn't matter what real approval you go with, they're never going to approve anyone that goes wants to buy through another real approval. Well, but you can challenge that. You can yeah, challenge that. But they, 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 should, they, they can only, they, they can't discriminate against you. The only reason that they could really in theory, prevent someone from moving in is if their credit checked. But 
there's no way you can ask them. They say, we, that's a privacy issue. We don't have to tell If I was a potential purchaser that was being turned down, I would certainly tell them. They have that to that and they, 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 that's what they use. It's a privacy issue. We do not have to tell you why we don't. That's a consumer protection issue. Yes, the problem. What happens there is that buyer, prospective buyer, is very disenchanted with the park and doesn't want anything to do with the park, and therefore, why would they want to do it? I have another question. Is there any other? Are you charged for the manager serves you that notice? Yes, that happens a lot. Is that your piece? No. No. Can't hear what's going on over here. I know it's too many side conversations. So the question was if the manager is posting a notice on your door for some violation of your rental agreement. They're also charging you for the privilege of sticking that notice on your door. Is that legal? And we see it in a lot of no. states where they're charging $25, $75 just to come and post that notice on your door. It's a process fee. Is legal or it's not? It's not in the lease. No, it, 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 well, it could well be legal because it could be the service of process fee. Um, and it, even if it just takes them two minutes to walk from their manager's office to your home and back, um, there's a, right? There's a charge mm -hmm. for operating those parts of your business. Okay, okay you also charge to be them either for in the lease or in the notice to maintain. Yes, I mean, but I, mean, I, 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 I take the case. If it, if it wasn't in the lease and it wasn't in the park rules, I take the case. Yeah. But isn't that part of his job? Well, it's the same thing with rent. Isn't doesn't rent cover infrastructure repairs? No, sure. right? obviously not, since your infrastructures are all failing. So I would say that when you pay rent, some of that should go to capital improvements yes. and maintenance. Absolutely. Exactly. But right. how often does it? Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's yeah. why yeah. they say yeah. they raise their manufactured homes for the improvements. Exactly. Well, where's the improvements? Right. Exactly. I know. It's. Yeah. I, I wish right. they were the same. I wish. That there was inspection programs for manufactured housing communities the way there are inspection programs for apartment owners, right? Jurisdictions don't want slumlords, so there's often fairly strict local codes around housing um, inspections for apartment buildings, but there's nothing, absolutely nothing equivalent for manufactured housing community owners, and I don't know why, right? I mean, these make a lot of sense. So, all right. I just have a question. Um, ELS has a sales arm called Carefree Sales. That is, the sign on our community center says Carefree Sales. They're not licensed to do business in Virginia. I've already informed the AG about it, and they're not really doing anything. So what I'm trying to figure out is how can they operate legally to sell these manufactured homes to anybody, whether it's resale or new homes coming in, they're not licensed in Virginia. And so I found their license in Pennsylvania, but not in Virginia. So if you have any recommendation about how to do something about that, because the AG is obviously ignoring it. So I don't, you know, the first question in my, I mean, does Virginia require licensure? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Doesn't the Secretary of State have those records and that's where you would go? Most states, the licensing goes through the Secretary of State. Right. Well, she knows they're not licensed yeah. in, in Virginia. That, but where does she go to get, get that dealt with? The Secretary of State, Secretary of State. Would, would propose to the AG's office to investigate yeah. that. Okay. That's a good idea. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, it's break time, unless there's any other pressing questions. Um, do you have the same I want to thank Carolyn very much for that.